We are checking in on the adventures of Dale and Jerry as uh, they were down around uh, last week getting ready to head off to corporate headquarters. And now they are uh, moving their way down to Portland and uh, back up now here in the Northwest. Uh, or uh, you know, It's all the Northwest. Whatever. How you guys doing? We're doing great, Jeff. How are you? I'm well. Yeah, we hit 70 degree temperatures in Portland on Friday. That was awesome. I don't want to hear about it was that. It a beautiful day. And we're going to get 70 ne- a week from today. Well, I'll mark my calendar and hold you to it, please. Yeah. And we learned a lot about Uber. I heard you and Patrice talking about Uber. Did my, you guys do it? No, my son uses it all the time, and it's really very convenient. He usually gets picked up uh, between four minutes or something down right. there. Right, and wow. as, as uh, Patrice alluded to, they have a picture of the driver and the vehicle. So we met with him for dinner, and uh, he called Uber to get him there and then when they got ready to leave they called Uber again and Uber was in there within four or five minutes. Yeah, we barely had time to say goodbye. We went out and he called Uber and here's your car. I think they just kind of yeah. They're just like hovering. It, no, it's it's no. it all has to <laughs> You need to ride? Yeah, you need to ride? Yeah. It all has to do with logistics and years ago I had a, a job where you dealt with logistics and and typically logistics being logical being the root word you would think this is everything's logical. Well, it's not. And in the transportation industry and this one as well, uh it's it's a matter of uh, connecting the closest car to where you are and and that's really what it does instead of taking a car from downtown portland out there they look and see what do i have available local and that's how they get things and pretty much those cars stay pretty locally instead of making those long long trips unless of course their end destination is to be in olympia or you in you, portland you guys think you'd ever try it oh sure yeah and the I've car, seen the, the sticker, the U, the like uh-huh. the bl- square that has the U around town. So there are cars. There are some there. Ubers around, so mm-hmm. yeah, it's going to be everywhere. Why not? I mean, and, it's local. Yeah, and the car that they brought was actually a large pickup. Oh. With King Cab. So it's a. I mean, they're not they, like. They use their own vehicles. So. Yeah. They're not necessarily Junko cars. Some people have pretty nice yeah. rides that they get on there. Yeah. Huh. There's also uh, you're talking about flying cars. Yeah. Um, How about that? There's a personal transport uh, that's a flyby. Fly th- scooter uh, bike kind of a thing with handlebars. And <laughs> it can go, it doesn't have to be cleared by the FAA and it can go like 80 miles an hour and they're testing that right now oh, and that's a single gosh. rider deal. More like an aero bike. Oh, God. Just something to keep in mind uh, while you're dodging the other cars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch out for those rascals on those no-wheelers. Yeah. Soon enough, so, you'll be able to get these plans online and just build your own. And I'm you're gonna sure do there'll be kits. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So through all the travels, yes. my big adventure, uh, I have to say, um, of course, we had some pictures posted last week about the the old dish getting torn down, yeah. and we're getting ready for the new satellite, and you've talked uh, you know, about that to the listeners, and, and that's very exciting. I have to admit, our AM signal today yeah. is the cleanest, best signal KMAS has ever had on the AM dial. And if yeah. you haven't tried AM for a while, I understand. It's kind of like an old school thing. But boy, I tell you what, we got a brand new Harris transmitter hooked up and humming. Mm-hmm. And it is a pretty incredible yeah. signal. And, and um, the benefit of that Harris transmitter is we should see about, and I'm estimating a good 30 to 50 percent reduction in the uh, power fees. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, because it's solid state. It's not uh, sucking up all of that 10,000 watts and going nowhere with right. it. So. so so it's been a while since the people have trekked over to the AM. Just give it a test drive. We took it uh, out beyond Lacey uh, this past weekend. I was clear up in the Netherlands of Lake Cushman up on a four-service road. Not a break in the signal at all. Just was very impressed with our, our new AM signal. So You said that you were getting it pretty far south, so, more southerly than before. Yes. Milepost 44, and that's when I remember to turn it on. 44? Wow, that's and way it was down there. That's just a few clear, miles out of Portland. It, it was as clear as it was here. Yeah. So uh, before, I w- I could hear it, yeah. milepost 56, but it was real scratchy and in and out. You had to, so be, I in, just, you had to be invested. I, yeah, I was really it, yeah. unhappy that I hadn't thought of turning it on earlier because I bet we could have heard it in Portland. Well, I was up 
Bel- uh, when we went up to Skagit for the tulips, and this was before, but I think it was kind of maybe half working. Half power. Yeah. And I heard it up past uh, SeaTac. Yeah. yeah. We were coming in yeah. pretty yeah. clear. So it is, uh, if people haven't tried it for a while. Uh, yeah, that's a good I, one. So that was my highlight of adventures that's last a great week. One. I mean, it does and sound, I wanted to touch on that. Clear. Just, oh yeah, it really is really yeah. exciting. Um, uh, North Mason Chambers having a luncheon today, and they're talking about signage in Belfair uh, and beautification. And they've got uh, some official from the county and city and whatever planning commission that has uh, all the whys and wherefores of how to do signage for your oh, business. That's probably yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be kind of a good luncheon right. today. Maybe maybe the uh, some of the locals here will go to that because one of the biggest complaints, and we got this one from when they did the visioning uh-huh. uh, exercise, that we do not, on our 101 that bypasses Shelton, do not give anybody a reason to stop. Oh, yeah, if no. You, if you stop and see what's there. So I want to I want to challenge that the, like the quilt shop. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I want to challenge the uh, chamber and or you know those businesses that can afford to put a sign out there to give them a reason to stop. Yeah, come on into um, town. And certainly we should put uh, the chamber office because we know that's where everybody goes uh, to yeah. get their they go to information the, about the there, city. The Tolly crosses way. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. Uh, yeah, those okay. that tourist Activity sign is mm-hmm. a bit woeful. Yeah, <laughs> needs a little tuning up too. Unlike at Dale, I I did have a couple adventures just recently, as recent as yesterday. I go but now. I missed I missed my uh, opportunity to listen to the Shelton High School students report on high school and beyond. Oh yeah, I felt really uh, dumb because. Number one, I I realized that when we were on the trip and I had no numbers to call and apologize for not being there. But the choice one is this Friday, so I'll be going to okay. that one. And yeah. those are always really fun to see the creativity of the young people. And Did you guys engagement. have to do that, a, a project your senior year? Let's see. Let me read this again because I was, I was talking about that this morning. Something about... Uh, all Washington State seniors must produce a comprehensive plan for their life after high school to graduate. Mm. Yeah. Well, and, and well, the draft draft was still in place when I we were getting out of high school. So there's yeah. so there was either keep good grades in college or go in the military. And, and ours, uh, ours was in this early days. It was a matter of uh, uh, identifying what you're going to do in your yearbook. You know, so you had to put in a one liner or whatever, oh, yeah. which got put in your yearbook. And at that time, most of the women were going to get married and raise a family. Myself, it wasn't to get married and raise a family. I was going to go do something. I didn't know what. I, I mean, <laughs> so, that, so that, is, that, a, that is tough for kids. For yeah. being only 17 or 18 years old and trying to project what you're going to do. Yeah. Get and up. I, I barely could make it through the weekend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah, well, there's two shining examples for you. <laughs> what are you talking about? And here want, we are. <laughs> yeah. If you want to know where to go to do that kind of stuff, go to ra- go into radio, <laughs> which is a, which is, seems to be disintegrating at People times. People seem to, have, I guess, yeah. have better life plans they, now. They do gravitate towards it. <laughs> you were at the PUD <laughs> yesterday too, stable. right? Yes, I was at the PUD yeah, let's talk yesterday. Talk about this is a big deal. Yeah, well, it is, and uh, so. I attended the PUD meeting two weeks ago because they're every two weeks, and they had testimony there once again from pretty much the same people regarding the impact Uh fees. Nobody wants to pay impact fees. However, how does the industry, how do cities, municipalities and that grow their infrastructure? Um, And typically, there might be some of it was property taxes we know our own nine monies and that from Mm -hmm. the county go into that but a standard procedure for most areas and i talked with judy kitchen my neighbor who her husband was a contractor all his life that system development fees have always been there and that's a fee that you pay uh, you're paying it forward kind of because you're expecting that the infrastructure is there and uh, a lot of times when an area goes in to develop like hall yeah for the shelton springs project you would expect there was a school and roads and curbing and all of that in prior to them putting houses and infrastructure in there because 
residential areas cost us money. Mm -hmm. So, but that's been standard process. My husband working for the water department in the West Hills of Portland, they had to pay a system development fee as part of their hookup because there was more things beyond that they had to prepare for. So it's kind of been a standard thing. I looked online to see if there was other creative ways that people had handled it, and pretty much it's that. So this brouhaha, and we stop and look at why is Shelton behind the eight ball, it's because we've never, the PUD's never collected system development fees, so now the people who are paying system development fees feel that that's unfair because these people before, but is it fair to have everyone pay for a new development where a contractor is not building those houses for, you know, break even, mm -hmm. he's building it for a profit. The Shelton Springs project, what He's, you know, big box stores come in and the properties, I mean, they're doing it for a profit. So the guy who's going to profit from it, should they pay for it? I know the shellfish industry, they're looking for more power and whatnot. Should they pay for it? Are they going to profit from it? Anyway, uh, it's it, it's it was quite a long discussion yeah. over the several months that they talked about it. They did get in, input, but I don't know how you improve infrastructure to meet your comprehensive plans if you don't invest and so far we haven't invested or we back off from our investments some of the other options were everybody gets an increase mm -hmm. even right. folks who've been using the same power mm -hmm. output forever right isn't that the same logic they use for uh improving the roads in seattle is it that we pay for it yeah you know how fair is that and you know so there's um there's kind of an understanding that's missing i think of how all this stuff links together that provides the momentum for growth and i don't say you go carte blanche hold those uh city and and utility officials accountable and but bottom line come up with a creative way on how you're going to pay it other than spreading the cost over. Besides um, Heidi from the Chamber and Joel Baxter, Joel from the Master Builders, was there a large output of community talking about this at the meeting? Uh, in the past, there were several people that had spoke. Um, I know Marty Crow from Habitat spoke of oh, yeah. how that was going to increase the cost of the house by uh, two and a half percent and low income. So there was a request for consideration for those as well. As well. Um, and um, there was, uh, oh, Randy Lewis, he uh, gave testimony and advice to the, <laughs> to the uh, uh, commissioners. And it was really kind of interesting because in previous meetings, uh, there was a little bit of division in the, uh, you know, in the commissioners. However, they had a meeting last week, which Jeff Chu attended and I think he reported on, um, where it, it brought uh, them all together mm -hmm. saying, you know, this is kind of the standard. I don't know any other fair way to do this other than growth pays for growth. Yeah. And they did a... Uh, Justin did a uh, little. It's a cartoony video. Cartoony online. video. Yeah, I watched yeah. that. It made yeah. it. It Makes broke sense. it down pre right. pretty well. And it yeah. says we don't just go out and build substations, but we do, as we get requests, everybody pays their portion of it, and that's how they get for the new ones. And I, I mean, they have to do the same kind of stuff with roads. All right. Well, that just we gotta we gotta put the wraps on. I'm gonna get the hook here from ABC. Yeah. Okay. Thank so, you, Jeff. Thank well, you guys. Then we won't tell you about the budget. <laughs> 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 Don't want to start a, that. Not a pretty Eight o'clock here at <laughs> iFiber One News Radio.